What's up guys, so today we're going to be doing an install for this JK here and uh, what we're going to be putting on is uh, our tech truss and gussets, upper and lower. So first off, there's a couple ways to do this. You can actually leave the axle on the Jeep. Um, if you're going to do that, you just want to make sure that you have enough clearance under there to see everything. You want to make sure that you can actually weld all the spots, otherwise you're not doing anything constructive with this truss here. Um, another thing is when you're welding on the Jeep, make sure you unplug your positive and your negative battery terminals. Negative first, then the positive. Um, this is because when you have electricity going through your axle, you don't want to short circuit your Jeep and uh, TIPMs are not cheap and new batteries are not cheap and blah blah. So just unplug it. But what I like to do is pull the entire axle, it takes 45 minutes. Um, that way I can get inside welds, outside welds, weld everything, see everything, know if I missed a spot, and I don't have to sit there and lay under the Jeep and try to fight all of this. So first step is, once you get all that out, um, for the truss, you'll know it's an Artec, it's a jigsaw. There's about nine pieces here. And uh, what you wanna do is just get them all laid out on here. And what I like to do is mark on the axle where exactly everything contacts, because we have to clean right there. If you try to weld over the paint and dirt, you're not going to get a clean weld and it's just not going to be a happy time for you. So get those guys marked, then we'll be able to pull that off. Now I also am doing gussets here, which is a upper piece for your knuckle, for your little seed knuckle here. If you know JKs, you know that these guys bend really easily. So the top piece, you can see, fits right in. It's got these bends that are meant to go with your uh, outer axle. Then there's a lower. Um, the lowers are different. The tops are the same, but the lowers are different. Um, if you look closely, see this one's got this bend right here, or this uh, angle? This one's smooth. What that is, is for your sway bar here. So you go ahead, and you'll see it fits around that sway bar link. So again, we're gonna go mark around here, figure out where we need to clean off with a wire wheel or a flat disc, get it nice and smooth. Um, then we're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna tack the bottoms on. You don't need to do the top just yet, but you don't wanna fully weld the bottom on right away. You wanna make sure that the top stays on it for at least a little bit, because when you weld, it actually warps the metal and it'll make it move. You don't wanna have to like weld the entire thing and then it turns out you can't even fit your top on. So what I do is I tack the bottom into place and everything. I'll pull the top guy off, I'll put a couple of welds. I'll be switching off. When you're welding, just do a couple spots here go ahead and do a couple spots over here a couple spots on this side about an inch weld over here inch weld here inch there and just keep switching off you don't want to put too much heat on this axle because it can warp it and uh, no one's gonna be happy then so that's pretty much that once you guys get this guy welded on once you start welding these guys permanently you can actually weld this top piece on now for the center because this is cast it's not just mild steel like the axle tubing is um, welding there is gonna be perfect if you weld on here, chances are it's going to look great, but you're going to notice uh, there's a good chance that it may crack. So the smart thing to do here is um, get a torch, heat this, heat it up right here, right before you weld, and then uh, lay down some small welds, be moving around because that'll transfer the heat around. Um, you don't want to do all of it at once because you do have all your seals on the inside of your tubing, and your differential here can go bad. So just do a little bit at a time and uh, work your way around. Take your time. When you're done, it's nice to get like a welding blanket. Go to Harbor Freight, they're like 10, 15 bucks, and just wrap this area and let it sit until it cools off. If it cools off too quickly, your welds are for sure gonna crack right here. So if you let it cool slowly, um, it'll less chance of cracking. If you wanna do it properly, I think you have to use like a nickel rod, um, but you can still use flux or a MIG, whatever you wanna do. I've done tons of these and I haven't had a single one crack yet. So and now if you're doing your gussets here, one thing that's smart is um, ball joints. Factory ball joints are gonna go bad. There's no way around it. They're gonna go bad. So either A, um, get replacements at the same time you're doing your gussets, because it's just easy because everything's off, or uh, B, have broken gussets in the end. So what you wanna do here is uh, you don't wanna weld too much. If you decide you're gonna be keeping these ball joints, or if you already have nice ones like Synergy or Dynatrack and you don't want to press them out, weld slowly. Too much heat will ruin your ball joints. 
So just do half an inch over here, put a wet rag over it. Put a couple tacks, get everything into place, put a wet rag after you do a weld. Go to the other side. After you do that one, put a wet rag on top of it. Just let it sit here so it keeps this guy cold. I don't want to say cold, but it keeps it from getting red hot from the welding. Um, and just work your way around until you finally get everything done. And then again, keep a rag on your ball joints. You do not want them going bad. So that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and get everything uh, cleaned off and get it tacked on and get ready to go. All right, guys, what's up? So we just finished up putting the truss and the gussets on. Um, customer wanted the truss to be red, so hit that with some spray paint. But this is basically it. So the gussets, you can see uppers, lowers, clamps around this entire guy, and you weld there, you weld all around it. It's not going anywhere. The lower really isn't necessary because of how much thicker it is, but they sell them in kits and why not. Uh, there's the truss, connects to the coil perch, to the upper control arm tower, unless you get their uh, rock crawler specific three link one, where it actually is a solid piece. You actually cut that guy out and completely. Um, goes all the way across, stops halfway, welds to the differential like we talked about earlier. Second one goes on, same thing. Gussets. Great kit. It's a uh, cheap insurance. Uh, trusses, axles bend. It happens. The tubing's not that thick. Um, and these are more of like a hybrid 44, where it's a 44 differential, but the rest is all 30. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but it's a great kit. Um, I highly recommend it for everyone. Um, the next step would be get the skid plate. I mean, the uh, lower control arm skids, which I would highly recommend, just because if you hit those guys and it bashes out, your weld's either going to break and you're going to lose your whole mount, or uh, you're just going to have some bad time with your control arm. So, yeah, guys, this is pretty cheap. Um, I definitely recommend trussing over sleeves. There's two types of sleeves. Uh, Nitro, I believe, makes a hammer-in sleeve, which is, if you're going to go sleeve, I would recommend that. A um, bunch of other companies make welding, where you weld holes throughout the entire tubing, and then you... Uh, put in your new tube on the inside, and then you uh, rosette weld all the way around. I don't really recommend that, just because uh, I don't believe in really welding through that tube is gonna help too much. I mean, drilling through the holes, I mean, drilling the holes is gonna be really uh, negative towards the structural strength, so, but that's just my opinion. Trusses are a lot easier, they're a lot cheaper, and um, most companies, including myself, believe they're stronger. So sure, you can go both, but Truss is really great. Um, again, this is made by Artec Industries. Um, I highly recommend it. I've put this on all my Jeeps. I install it for everyone else's Jeeps. So if you guys have any questions on this, comment them below. Um, give me a like, because that helps me out. And give me a thumbs up. That's the same thing as a like. All right, subscribe for more videos like this, guys. See you next video.